part of today, dear people who are watching us in the right now, and we are blissfully happy to commence our today's program, which is called Our Pride. According to the custom of Our Pride program that we will talk about one of the most underappreciated professions and versatile and hateful people in our society. As you know, today's our hero is one of the international teacher in Uzbekistan, one of the international specialists in Uzbekistan, and of course, one of the best English teacher in Uzbekistan and the founder of the English Teacher Association and of course the prize winner of the English Teacher Training of the Year 2022 and of course Education World India is Feroz Akbarov. Hello, I am Frisk Barv, an international ESL instructor, as well as the founder of newly established English Teachers Network, popular and globally known as ETA Uzbekistan. It is a pleasure to be part of your new TV project, Our Pride, in which Uzbekistan's most successful professionals feature to share their success story to motivate the youth of Uzbekistan. And I am privileged to be part of this grand show. Speaking of my childhood, as we're living in the era which is inundated with high tech and the luxuries of internet, videography, photography. Back in the days when my childhood largely f uh, fell on the early 90s, when we didn't have those luxuries. So that's why there's very little that I can reminisce vividly. But during my school years, I think I have lots of memories to share with you as I was one of the brightest and standout students across the board, primary school, junior school, high school. There are three foundational principles that define my character as an individual, as a successful student. And interestingly, those three core values moved along all the way into my teaching career. And I'm pleased to share with you those three magic secrets. Number one, Punctuality. You know, I was the most punctual student ever. I, I was never late for any kind of lesson. And interestingly, I was never late for any class as a teacher as well. I can vividly recall one um, interesting uh, situation when I had to run to my class not to be late. And I was, you know, five minutes on time. And my second magic tip is responsibility. You know, this runs in my family and it is pretty much in my blood. And later on I became a teacher and I understood that responsibility is one of the core characters that defines you as a teacher, as, as an ultimate professional teacher. And I was commanded for my uh, particular responsibility by my Chinese employers. You know, I taught for about seven years in China across a plethora of cities and different kind of institutions. And I was always commanded by my Chinese employers about my responsibility, a sense of responsibility that I showcased towards my work. It was out of this world. Because I used to uh, co-work with uh, native English speakers from Canada, US, Australia, and New Zealand. And to them, the job was, you know, to those particular native English speakers who shared uh, the workplace with me, they were very relaxed and sometimes casual. So to them, you know, being a couple of minutes late for the class wouldn't uh, be considered a, a disaster. But to me, honestly, it was the tip of an iceberg. That was the start of a, a disaster. So I tried not to be late. And I tried to be responsible all the time. And my third tip is you need to be passionate. And I'm still a passionate lifelong learner as a teacher. You know, every day I spend on the professional development, hours. I dedicate and commit time to learning, discovering, exploring new things, new pieces of knowledge, information. I try to, uh, you know, scrutinize everything that I see, read, hear, 
talk, communicate, exchange here. So um, you need to be really passionate about what you do. As said, uh, one of the great mentors of, of all time, Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, he said, there's no way of great work unless you, you love what you do. You really have to love what you do. And only then you will be successful. And those three key and core values and characters truly brought out the best in me, both as a student, a teacher, and an individual. Today, I am incredibly happy uh, to speak about one of my best colleagues in the field of ELT, uh, Mr. Feroz Akbarov. Mr. Feroz Akbarov is a professional uh, who dedicated his life and career uh, to teaching English language uh, worldwide. And these days, it is uh, vividly noticeable that uh, Mr. Feroz Akbarov uh, has been doing uh, great projects in the field of ELT, uh, especially in our republic. And one of them is uh, ETA, uh, English Teachers Association Group on Facebook, uh, which could bring around many ELT specialists uh, to bounce ideas of uh, on uh, latest teaching technologies and methodologies uh, of teaching English. And uh, I think that uh, ETA is not just an ordinary uh, group uh, for teachers, but it is also uh, a unique uh, project which could uh, gather so many teachers from every corner of Uzbekistan and of the world uh, to get known about the latest uh, uh, webinars uh, because Mr. Feroz Akbarov uh, always tries to share upcoming webinars, international conferences, uh, online and offline teacher training courses, and everything about ELT uh, on this ETA uh, group uh, we can find easily. In our lives, we have moments when a surprising turn of events occur. We call them turning points. And every person have their fair share of turning points in their life. Change the, the whole scenery, their life, upside down. And one of those major turning points in my life was uh, getting admitted to uh, Samarkand State Institute of Foreign Languages. And that was the, the, the opening door to countless opportunities. As a graduate student, I was already able to travel to three countries, South Korea, Turkey, and India. And all three times, I got a scholarship by the government, by the government of South Korea, by the government of Turkey, and by the government of India. And I vividly remember that in 2006, I was fortunate to meet uh, the, then the Prime Minister, but now the President of Turkey, Mr. Recep Tayyip Erdogan. I had a handshake with him, and he gifted me a watch, which I kept it all along. And later on, I, I, I continued uh, to pursue my master's in India on a scholarship basis uh, through ICSAR scholarship, Indian Council for Cultural Relations. And I spent two wonderful years of my life, which makes up to a considerable chunk of my fond memories of my life. You know, when I think of India, it just amazing memories flush back, the flood back and, and is truly awesome. You know, I could go on to talk about my India story for hours and, and I'm sure one single TV program time would not allow me to go to that extra length. But I can tell you, there are a few things that India taught me and I still have those valuable lessons with me all along through uh, throughout my life. India taught me how to become individual and independent person. I used to get a monthly stipend because I was an ICCL scholar. I used to do some, some work at, at the call center to you know, further improve my English skills. Plus, there were some incentives, monetary incentives. And you know, I, was, I was quite well off 
even as a student, I didn't have to ask for any single penny from my parents. So in that regard, I must uh, be thankful to India for you know, making me an independent person. And to this day, I'm financially independent. And India has played a, a greater part in that respect. And there's another takeaway from my time in India. India taught me how to think in English. You know, it, it may come as a, as, as a shock, as India is not an English-speaking country to a large extent, but still, I learned how to think in English. And to be honest, it took me quite a while to you know, communicate with local Indians and you know, get across my message and communicate smoothly because things that were taught back at home didn't really work. When I went to India for about six months, you know, there was a kind of a miscommunication or I either had a hard time communicating with the locals. But then, you know, slowly and gradually, I picked up what is called authentic English in the very local Indian community. Something that might come as a surprise and shock to a lot of people, but yeah, that's my success story. And I'm thankful to India. I had uh, another bigger turning point in my life, which is China, where I spent about seven years, incredible seven years. And China further gave me you know, an opportunity to polish my English skills. And I owe China a larger part of my today's success story in terms of you know, uh, language, in terms of English skills. Because China provided me a, a super competitive stage to you know, uh, teach alongside native English speakers from Canada, US, UK, Australia, New Zealand. I never thought, it never flashed across my mind to you know, sit and, and interact and talk with native English speakers in the office. That was like a dream come true. Come on, that's, that's an amazing experience for which I'm, I'm forever indebted to, to, to China. And, and the highlight of my time in China was in December 2014 when uh, my name was called onto the stage and I saw my name in large font, Feru Zakbarov, the best TESOL teacher award. That was amazing. You know, I can't forget any second of that wonderful experience that I've been through, that I looked at were the native English speakers in the front row and I was I was flabbergasted. I was like, what's going on? You know, those guys who I looked up as my idols, as a role model, were looking at me in awe, in surprise, amongst, you know, native English speaking team. So um, that was perhaps the major turning point of all turning points in my life, because of which I started, you know, gaining more confidence in my skills and capabilities. I became a totally different person. That very trophy transformed me to become a more confident, professional, even more dedicated, passionate, and committed learner and a teacher. And, who, and, and to this day, I have kept all those wonderful qualities with me. And I'm going to pass it on to all those uh, young and bright generation of Uzbekistan who look up to us, perhaps as their role model. So my tip is, if you want to achieve greater success in life, make sure you believe in yourself. You believe in your skills and capabilities. And only then, your dream would become a reality. So my dear friends, my dear viewers, I sincerely wish that your most coveted dreams in life would become a reality. And the very first thing that you need to make them become a reality is a self-belief, a self-efficacy. You have to believe that you are gonna do it sooner or later, but for sure. Good morning. First of all, thank you for inviting here nowadays. I'm a student of ACCA and Tashkent State University of Economy. For coming to this position, we want or know some kind of our results, our success belongs to our teacher. Somehow I should admit that who prefers my pronunciation, who thinks my English knowledge is acceptable, 
all these are issues belongs to Mr. Ferus. And when things going on about lesson, I will always remember that how Mr. Ferus prepared and wrote plans for each lesson. And Mr. Ferus are sparkle example of people how he or she can be creative or ambitious and fair for his work preparing presentations making mental exercise and making ppts and outside entertainment lessons all that are belongs to mr ferus method and also he required from us this quality in addition i should admit that i will always being proud of that I am a student of Mr. Firuz. In addition, I did the greatest selection for my academic life, that time being a course of Mr. Firuz. Now let's talk about another turning point in my life, which fell uh, to the time when the entire world was in the tight grip of COVID-19 global pandemic, when the world was largely disrupted and the global education came to a halt temporarily. And during COVID-19 global pandemic, a lot of people were in a bottomless despair. They didn't have any clues where to go and what to do. And I myself was not an exception. I found myself as one of those directionless people. I didn't know how to continue my profession, how to teach my students, because I used to teach right here at one of the leading centers of Tashkent, Kingdom Education, Uzbekistan's first innovative language school. But then, you know, slowly and gradually, I came to realize that every challenge comes with an opportunity. So I took it as an opportunity, as a new window of opportunity to try and test. I became a vlogger, and which is one of my hobbies actually, you know. I have uh, pretty much unconventional hobbies, very different from other people's. Like most people would like to read some books or do some sports. But in my case, you know, I love making videos and being part of the video. And that's how I got fascinated in vlogging. And over time during the pandemic, I started uploading all those videos of mine that were at my uh, disposal. And little did I know that I, you know, accumulated over 60 videos till now. And now I have a decent amount of uh, YouTube subscribers, about 1,000 subscribers already. So, you know, um, I'm thankful to what pandemic uh, offered to me. I thought pandemic was a disaster. I thought pandemic was the end of the world, but no, you know, it just depends on your mentality, on your mindset, on how you view things. If you take it as an advantage, it becomes an advantage. If you take it as a disadvantage, and it becomes a disadvantage. So to me, pandemic was a real um, blessing in disguise. I became an international speaker. I became a vlogger. I started even mentoring virtually, both uh, you know people of Uzbekistan, all those English teachers, and internationally. I have a huge international fan base both in, uh, in Uzbekistan and, and, and abroad. So, and I also became uh, the founder of an international English teacher network, now popularly known as ETA Uzbekistan. What is ETA Uzbekistan? It's a brand new virtual English teachers network. It's pretty much like an association that runs in line with a slew of presidential decrees like the promotion of foreign languages in Uzbekistan and also in line with United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4, creating lifelong learning opportunities for all English teachers, both at home and abroad. So, you know, I ventured out across the country and I traveled as the COVID restrictions started to relax. I ventured out across the country and traveled for about 4,500 kilometers, covering the most remote and rural corners of the country, reaching out wider rural English teachers community, both in the cities and the urban area. And I delivered 30 plus free in-person trainings and even a greater number virtually. Hundreds of lives, 
hundreds of lives of English teachers were impacted in the aftermath of all those trainings, workshops, seminars, and masterclasses. And to this day, I'm receiving, I'm reaping the harvest of all those hard work that I, I put into creating this network. Uh, last year alone, I was given six international awards. I can just go on reciting Universal Leadership Award uh, that are given for Outstanding Global ed Edu Leaders by Educacia World India. I was uh, given awards like the Best Teacher Trainer of the Year, the Best Teacher of the Year, the Best Teacher Trainer of the Year, and, and others. You know, I was able to connect to forge a lasting partnership with English teachers from all parts of Uzbekistan. And thanks to the global pandemic, I, you know, set a couple of global records. I went on to complete uh, one of the world famous TESOL course by Arizona State University, USA, in the record 20 days with flying colors. And this record remains a record till now. That's incredible. I took a language cert exam and I got a C2 across the board. Speaking, listening, reading and writing. That's another achievement. And that all happened during the pandemic. You know, during the global pandemic, I attended hundreds of uh, workshops and webinars and trainings virtually. And I was able to, to take my professional development to a totally unprecedented height. So it's, it's all owing to pandemic. Now, I, uh, you know, I was able to establish my presence, uh, my, my firm presence across international platforms. And recently, uh, my proposal was accepted for TESOL Arabia 27th conference in Dubai, which is going to take place uh, on March uh, 10th and 12th. So I'll be traveling to Dubai on behalf of Uzbekistan. Fingers crossed. And on uh, February 3rd, I'll be presenting as the first ever presenter at the APAC ELT convention, which is organized by Spain. So that's it's a great deal. Now, lots of, you know, TESOL associations came to know about me. Last year in October, I was invited to the capital of Tajikistan, Dushanbe, as a panelist on, on behalf of Uzbekistan and a presenter. Uh, you know, this is a huge appreciation to my work and to my commitment and dedication to the sphere of ELT and my contribution. I want to tell you a little bit uh, about Mr. Firuz Akbarov. So I met him at Webster University during the conference about uh, creativity and ELT, which is uh, Eng English language teaching. And you know what? Uh, the first impression he made on me was uh, really amazing. I was actually a volunteer at this conference and he uh, entered uh, the Webster University and everyone started you know, greeting him, everyone just gave him a friendly smile and welcome and I, and I thought that uh, this is the person who is uh, really important in our life. And then um, during the conference uh, he made an amazing presentation, uh, it was about creativity so, and technology as well, so he made a very creative presentation. So. Actually, he really stood out among other participants uh, because of his uh, voice, his uh, deep voice, his very confident and his cheerful personality, you know, really impressed everyone in the audience. And one of the me main takeaways of this uh, conference for me personally was that I realized the importance of creativity because it's very important to be creative and I also follow him on uh, YouTube so he makes uh, many videos you know about uh, learning uh, language about teaching language and recently he uh, released uh, a video about uh, how to become a uh, like a native speaker and it was really amazing in this uh, video he told us he shared many insights about how to attain a native speaker fluency and yeah
So he gained so many followers, he gained so many likes. I uh, really respect Mr. Firuz Akbarov. He is very intelligent, he is a cheerful personality. Uh, his knowledge, his uh, the way of speech, and he's also a showman, by the way. If you guys uh, look at his uh, presentations, if you watch his videos, and then you will realize that how great speaker he is. I am forever grateful uh, for his insights and for his advice about ELT. So to be honest with you guys, I want to be as professional as him in the future. So I'd like to take this opportunity, as it is uh, you know, a motivation in itself, I want to take this opportunity to address to you. Make sure that there are the challenges in life. But if you take the challenge in a boldly, uh, you know, without a fear, adamantly, you will emerge victorious and you will become one of those uh, winners and, and victors in the end. So if you are now challenged by some kind of problems, some kind of um, you know, shortcomings and deficiencies in your life, just make sure that is not going to last forever. So a lot depends on your mindset and, and how quickly you react to different kind of problems and situations. So in my case, those four, those were four major turning points that you know, brought, out, brought out the best in me and made me become one of those prominent ELT specialists both in Uzbekistan and, you know, I can, I can say it, uh, quite proudly that I became one of those prominent ELT professionals across the globe. You know, a lot of uh, world-class ELT professionals came to know about me, about my work, uh, through my YouTube videos, through my uh, international webinars, through my trainings, through my publications. I started writing lots of articles, stories, and blogs. And I was, you know, one of those first ELT professionals from Uzbekistan and also Central Asia whose uh, article on vlogging featured on MET, Modern English Teacher. That's a journal uh, which is issued in the UK. So I had my name on the front page alongside world-class ELT authors, which was, you know, mind-boggling. I never expected uh, to see my name next to uh, world-class ELT authors and, and, and professionals. That was quite an achievement in itself. Right now, we are working on business project, start a project uh, with, with my team uh, called InCase. It's, the InCase project is about to help to construction companies. So we are building a, a mobile application for construction companies like Nest One or Golden House that, are, that will help them to their customers uh, to reach them uh, easily and get the uh, purchase the room so easily. Uh, well, in my team, we, uh, we have, uh, I have five team members that I will manage all of them uh, and, I, and I have to balance the, all the tasks to uh, separate the tasks to each one of the team. Uh, and in some cases, um, uh, there will be some situations that I have to speak more to the team members to motivate them. So in this case, uh, uh, public speaking skills and uh, uh, and other kind of skills really help like to me uh, for motivating to them. You know, as part of this program, I prepared some quite a useful tips and hacks for all of you, uh, the English lovers and learners. I want you to, you know, first expose yourself to authentic use of English as much as possible. And this was, uh, you know, a magic trick in my life because I've been to about 30 countries, and in all those countries, I had an extreme uh, exposure to the authentic use of English, especially in China, while I was working you know, shoulder to shoulder with native English speakers. That was a kind of a practical ba battleground. So, you know, I want to take this opportunity to address both the learners and the teachers. If you're learning English, try to expose yourself to the authentic use of English. Try to watch lots of um, authentic English videos on YouTube. I try to communicate with a native English speaker. N nowadays, you know, it, it is pretty much uh, possible through Google Meet, uh, Zoom, and some other virtual um, platforms and applications. Why not? So exposure, you know, comes on top of my list of priorities. And then 
I want you to contextualize every new word that you learn on a daily basis. Imagine you want to learn a set of uh, you know, vocabulary related to um, restaurant, but without contextualizing those uh, you know, phrases and, and set of expressions, without putting them into a meaningful context, you would never be able to remember and commit them to your long-term memory. So my second tip is try to contextualize everything that you learn, every bit of you know, word or expression or idiom or kind of a, you know, a, the, the entire sentence structure. Try to put it into a meaningful context and only then you will be able to you know, um, polish your English skills. So my dear friends, the dear viewers of Our Pride TV project, if you're watching us, I want you to re-watch this episode again and again to understand the essence of learning a language. It is not just memorizing words. I'm telling it again. It's not about memorizing the dictionary and you know just learning new sets of idioms. It's all about learning something little but being able to put it into multiple contexts and being really playful and inventive and creative about the use and the application of every bit of thing that you learn on a daily basis. And this is what makes you a fantastic learner, I'm sure. I wish you all the best in your discovery and journey of learning English and also teaching English. If you aim, if you aspire to become one of those prominent ELT professionals in the future. Thank you for your attention. At the end of our Pride program that we would like to wish good health, wealth, long life and success our dear guests' future endeavors. Such kind of heedful, high labored and versatile people play an important role in our public life and society as our Pride all the time. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye!